Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to talk a little bit about extensions and extension use. So this is going to be very different from our normal extension videos. Normally with an extension video, we take an extension, we show you how to use it, uh, we compare how using the extension works with using native tools, show you the benefits of doing it, that sort of thing. Uh, this is going to be very different because I don't necessarily want to pick a single extension to talk about, but the extensions as a general concept and how they play into you being the best SketchUp user you can be. Um, so one of the things that we've been talking about, we did a video on it recently, uh, we've talked about it on the forum, and we talked about it at Basecamp, is you know identifying where you at. Are you a beginner, intermediate, advanced user? Uh, it's an important thing to know that about yourself. Uh, and we did a whole video on that, helping helping people identify that. But one of the things that comes up, it came up in the comments, it's come up in the forums, is intermediate and advanced users use more extensions. And I think that is true. In general, if we look at a user who is beyond being a beginner user, they generally have extensions in their workflow at some point. That is is usually very true. But I don't want it to confuse you with the fact that using extensions, just the act of downloading and installing extension doesn't make you an intermediate user. There's actually some danger in jumping right away from installing SketchUp and then immediately putting in extensions and just learning how to use those extensions. Uh, the problems can be things like, well, what happens if the extension doesn't work? What if the extension doesn't do something perfectly right? How do you modify geometry that you create inside of SketchUp if the only tools you know how to use are those automated extensions? So. I wanted to talk a little bit about how this works, how, how you should go about in, in bringing extensions into your workflow and uh, when to do it and, and when not to really is the more important part. We're going to talk about where you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot by jumping into extensions uh, maybe before you're ready. Um, real quick, before we actually go in and talk about that specifically, I want to identify what I see as the four main types of extensions. So we're gonna do that real quick. Uh, first one is geometry creation. So these are tools where uh, maybe very specific, I know that we have, there's, there's uh, basic shape tools uh, like solids where you can, with a button click, drop in a cube or a torus or a star or, or so, that kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty simple geometry creation, but there's stuff that's much more specific, right? Like uh, roof creation tools or uh, geometry, you fill, fill in some things and it automatically creates a door or window or that sort of thing where the, the geometry is created automatically. So that's the first type of extension I see that, that speeds up the process of the actual 3D model creation. The second one I would identify is geometry manipulation. So this is things like Fredo 6. Some of you guys know I, I use a lot of his extensions. And Fredo has a bunch of bending and, and moving and topography tools where it could take existing geometry and manipulate it and change it around. Um, I would put some things, there's some component tools out there too that make it easy to rep, uh, repeat geometry or edit repeated geometry. I would put those in the geometry manipulation tools. Um, also good extensions to have. Sometimes the, the basic, the default tools, move, uh, rotate, uh, flip, you need more than that. And, and those tools do that sort of geometry. So also good tools to have. The third type, I kind of all lump together into data handling. Uh, SketchUp itself is not a data tool. It's not Excel or anything like that, obviously, but it does have the ability to put lots of data in there. Uh, so, so reporting upon data is where I would put these kind of extensions or extensions that go in and analyze and give you data about your model, um, that sort of thing. They're going to go and count pieces or something like that. Any, any place where we're going to get data as opposed to geometry, I would say that is the third type of extension. And then, of course, just to, to keep it all rounded out, keep it even, the fourth type is rendering engines. So this takes your model, makes it photorealistic or, or looks like some other sort of art or whatever, um, those are going to be the third type that I would identify. So, or the fourth type, I'm sorry, counting. Um, but those are the four types that I would identify. So I just wanted to mention those real quick because 
they kind of come into your process maybe a little bit differently, a little bit uh, uh, might change a little bit depending on what you need out of SketchUp and how you're using it. So um, before we go any further, I want to hop in and talk about some of those different extension types and where and when you want to bring them in. Okay, so the first the first type, the one we looked at at the beginning was, uh, or the first two types, I guess I should say, is uh, geometry creation and geometry manipulation. So let's say, just for example, I have this I-beam shape and I want to turn it into a half circle like this. Um, I can do this with native tools. So I could come over here, I could create a circle, let's bump it up to like 48 sides, and I'll pull it out like this, and I'm gonna cut it in half, and then I'm gonna extend my ends just slightly because I know that's gonna be important, and then I will grab this, and I will weld those edges together, and then uh, I'm just gonna borrow this profile real quick, copy that, whoops, I grabbed. Copy that, paste it right here. And now I could take this, I could say follow me, click on this, and then final step would be to push this back to here. Double click to push that back, same amount. So there we go. Not too bad. I, I, I totally just drew a circle. I didn't pay attention to the exact size. But you can see Native Tools did that. That was pretty easy. But if I know this is something I'm gonna do regularly, then grabbing an extension, say in this case, we'll just go grab a uh, true bend and saying, pull this out 180 degrees and done. That was easier. So this is a big part of geometry creation or uh, geometry manipulation extensions is they do this sort of thing. These are especially useful if and when you have a workflow, if, if, if I work with steel beams and I have to show them in certain shapes or bent or whatever, having an extension that makes that a one-click process or two clicks, definitely worth having. But I would say it is very important to know how to do what I just did over here too. Because let's say, for example, I'm working on deadline, I got to get a thing done, I got to bend this, and then for whatever reason, the extension doesn't work. I don't know, maybe I, my license ran out or uh, the website it checks is down or I uh, installed a new version. New version and the extension hasn't been updated to that new version yet. Stuff happens. And if stuff happens, if I know how to use native tools to create the same thing, I'm not totally out of luck. The other thing that can happen, this is no disrespect to any extension creators, of course, is they don't do everything perfect all the time. Every once in a while, the best extension will leave a gap in geometry or do something incorrect and it happens. If you know how to use native tools to create it, you're not out of luck. The extension may still save you 80, 90% of the time you need and then go in and fill it in with, with your native tool abilities. So when it comes to those first two types of extensions, I get worried when I see people on the forum saying, hey, just started using SketchUp and I need an extension to create and then whatever that is. A lot of times you'll see pushback from sages or staff going, well, it's actually not that hard to create. Here's the steps to go through to do that. Rather than saying, yep, here's an extension, go get it. Because it's uh, it's one of those, you know, teach a man to fish kind of things where if you understand how to create it with native tools, you will be potentially in a lot better shape. The other extension type, the third type we talked about is the data handling or the data, something that, that pulls upon your model to create some sort of output. I would actually put, I call it data handling, but uh, exporting tools too. So if I'm gonna send this out to a CNC or something like that, uh, I would put this in there. A lot of times workflows are built around those tools. So those kind of extensions, those extensions that create a specific set of data for output, those extensions right there, they're probably the ones that you may actually have right at the beginning, just got SketchUp, just installed Condoc tools or Framer or Medique software, 
right from the beginning because that's going to enable me to do what I want to do. So there are situations where starting with an extension at the beginning does make a lot of sense and those are the sorts of situations. Renderers, they're their whole, whole other category. That doesn't, doesn't really affect this. If you're going to render, go get a renderer. That's cool. Um, you still got to learn to create models though. So those are the thoughts I really wanted to convey. Again, this is mostly to help people, prevent people from hurting themselves um, because we've seen that. We've seen people go in, they're like, I, I don't know how to clean this up. I just use blah, blah, blah to generate it each time. Um, in some cases, that might be fine. If, you're, if you work in an absolute bubble and you hit a button and an extension and it does its thing and that's it, cool, great. If you need any ability to work outside of the perfect happy path, uh, then I really, really highly, highly recommend learning to do whatever it is you got to do with native tools first, then adding those tools that help automate and speed up the process. Of course, like I said, exception is those, those backend tools that, that your entire workflow is built upon. If it's, if it's something you can't do in SketchUp, you can't do in SketchUp and learning native tools isn't going to help you when it comes to generating specific outputs that you need from an extension. But in general, just the big thing to remember is having extension, installing extension doesn't move you forward in your SketchUp ability. Uh, being able to work through what that extension does and knowing having those tools, that's what kind of moves you forward and makes you a better, more powerful SketchUpper. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, leave us a comment down below. We went off the beaten path a little bit this week. Uh, this isn't a normal, like I said, beyond desktop. We kind of did something a little bit different. And I'd love to hear what you think about it. Do you like these videos where we kind of advise you on the general use of SketchUp as opposed to specific tools? Or should we be spending more time on specific tools or workflows? Or do you like modeling videos? That's the other one. Did we just spend more time just modeling stuff and telling you how to do it? We like making these videos a lot, but we like me more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.